In June of 1885, J.J. Roche, Thomas Roche, M.C. Hurley, and some others in Fort Worth received a charter to build and operate the Fort Worth and New Orleans Railway Company. The tracks and bridge were completed in 1885. The bridge, just west of North Street, was completed in 1885 and renovated in 1906. It is one of the earliest and still used bridges in Tarrant County. The train started running through Mansfield in 1886. 42 miles of line were built from Fort Worth to Waxahachie to connect with the Central Texas and Northwestern Railroad Company. The line went through Mansfield because J.H. Wright, Dr. P.M. House, A.J. Dukes, and P.R. Beale put together a $5,000 kitty to provide some right-of-way and whatever other incentives were necessary to assure the installations here. The Fort Worth in New Orleans served the Mansfield heavy freight needs of 30 or 40 local businesses and numerous cotton growers for a couple of years. Then a series of transactions saw the rail line passing on to other names and road managers to ultimately become part of the massive Southern Pacific Lines, of which it is still part today. From the late 1800s into the early 1900s, many railroads were built and many changes in ownership were occurring as a struggle for power in the fast-growing industry was taking place. The Southern Pacific moved into the picture in Texas and this area through an 1888 transaction. The Southern Pacific continued to expand its operations almost entirely by property acquisitions rather than building new lines. The line is the oldest, largest, and strongest system in Texas. It serves every part of Texas except the Panhandle. Every city over 25,000 population except Wichita Falls, Laredo, Amarillo, San Angelo, Tyler, and Lubbock. The line is made up of what were chartered and built as 40 independent lines. Five of those were the first 10 in Texas. One was the first built in Texas. When the railroad was in its heyday, there were two water towers and two pumpers working full-time to take care of the thirsty locomotives that made Mansfield a regular port of call. There were six passenger trains then, three each way, to Fort Worth to the west and to Ennis to the east, where they connected with the main line to Houston and Dallas. Along in the 1930s, when the tractors came to take the place of the mule, there are more than 100 carloads of mules shipped to Alabama, Tennessee, and Georgia from Mansfield. However, by the early 1940s, the railroad industry peaked out and they began to drop passenger service and reduce freight services. Even though World War II had put a heavy demand on the industry, the automobile became the major people mover and trucking became the major industry. So the trains began to lose ground and lose business. In Mansfield, where the record of who the rail agents were back in the early days seems to be lost. The passenger service was ended in the early 1950s. Cotton farmers, their gins, and most other businesses turned to trucks for more convenient service so that today the trains that traverse the area make no passenger stops and few freight deliveries here, although several trains do go through Mansfield every day. Today's trains carry mostly intermodal, coal, automobiles, and heavier freight, and to catch an Amtrak, you would have to go to Fort Worth or Dallas. Times do change. The depot was closed on August 26, 1953. 
W.E. Marshall, depot agent, stated on his last day of work that when he came to Mansfield, there were three gins operating and he shipped more than 4,000 bales of cotton a year. On his last year, he shipped barely 600 bales from the lone gin still operating, and there had not been a passenger train through Mansfield in over a year. The ticket window in the office was nailed shut. Once I used to sell a lot of tickets, Marshall said. It was kind of nice, selling tickets to people going places all over, people getting married, people going to funerals, kids going away to school in the Army. Railroading, after all, wasn't what it used to be, really. The teletype had doomed the old telegrapher, just as the diesel had sent the steam locomotives to pasture. I hated to see the steam locomotives go. I missed the whistle of the old steam locomotive on a cold night. The old-time engineers could play a tune on them whistles. W.E. Marshall was the last depot agent, and when he locked up for the last time that day, he left behind 26 years of service as the agent. Where the warehouse alongside the station office once bulged with cotton, grain, farm implements, and dry goods, it was stark and empty that Friday afternoon, except for one crated washing machine. The depot sat empty for a while and was later used as a warehouse until the early 1960s when it was finally torn down. And there is still a depot street. It was there near Smith Street, west of Pond Branch, that the depot building was located. The population of Mansfield was 960 in 1953. The last cotton gin was closed about that time as well. The Mansfield Historical Society recognized the railroad in 2003 by creating one of their collector Christmas tree ornaments in honor of the Fort Worth and New Orleans Railroad Bridge. This ornament is available for purchase in the museum gift shop.